Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Chat and Chew. My name is Gigi Nabal, and I'm faculty at Loma Linda University School of Allied Health Professions and a registered dietitian. I have four amazing graduate students in the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics, and today they will be talking to us about food and sleep a really good topic to talk about. But before we discuss sleep and food, let's get to know them a little bit. I'm gonna start over here at the very far end. Can you please tell us your name and where you are from? Yes, my name is Kristen. Hello, and I'm Kristen. from Alto Loma, California, so ah. not far from here. Yeah, not too far. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to become a dietitian? I decided to become a dietitian because I think it's such an important component of health and wellness in general. I think nutrition plays such a big role in you know, wellness and how people feel. Yes, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Who do we have next to you? Yeah, my name is Magda Kojokaru. Oh, I come from hello. Romania. Uh, currently, I live yeah. here in Yes. <laughs> but wow, Romania is such a far away place. Do you exactly. miss Romania? I do, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you live now where? In Beaumont. In Beaumont, okay. So once you have those extra initials after your name, RDN, what are your hopes and plans career-wise? What would you like to do? Well, I am very interested in uh, cooking. Yes. And uh, I would like to teach people around me uh, easy ways on how mm. to implement easy recipes in their diet and uh, how to um, cook simple things to benefit their, uh, their uh, mm -hmm. health. It yeah. is, uh, nowadays we see so many um, recipes online that seem complicated mm -hmm. and we get scared because we don't have time, we don't know how to combine everything right. to get the best uh, uh, flavor. So um, I would like to educate people oh. on how to put together a meal that would be easy to cook as well as to enjoy the taste and flavor and to be beneficial for the health. Great, I love it. We're looking forward to that. I know your Instagram right now is showing a lot of the things that you make and so it's really <laughs> enticing to see the pictures that you put up, so that's wonderful. Yeah, I started the Instagram when I started this program actually yeah. uh, with the intent to remind myself the foods I am making. Ah, <laughs> wow. And okay. uh, I don't really have time to post recipes in there because our schedule is pretty busy. True. But with time, I will uh, go back to it and probably improve that too. Excellent. So everybody go to Magda's Kitchen. There you go. <laughs> Fabulous. Wonderful. And who do we have next to you? Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm um, Amanda. born and raised in Redland, so not too far from here. Yeah, just a little jump, yep. skip and a hop. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. And why did you choose Loma Linda University as your school to obtain your education with so many other schools around? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at a few different programs mm -hmm. and I think location was the biggest factor for yeah. Loma Linda and then also that I could finish um, both my bachelor's and my master's within a three-year period. Nice. So that was very intriguing for me. Mm -hmm. Those would be the two reasons for me too if I were looking for a program. Living nearby and the exactly. combination. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Last but not least we have... I'm Liz and mm -hmm. I'm from Dana Point. Okay. California. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. So let's see. When it comes to nutrition, what is the heart, the passion that drives you to become someone who is a nutrition expert? What does that stem from? I just like to help people and I love food mm -hmm. and I like health. So I feel Great like combo. It, yeah, it's all a good combo and mm -hmm. it just makes me so happy when I can help somebody and teach somebody in easy, simple ways. There you go. I love that. That's the reason why, all those reasons are the reasons why I became a dietitian mm -hmm. too. <laughs> so ladies, food and sleep. Oh, this is going to be so good. Okay, so this is such an interesting topic. And why did you choose it? 
Well, mm -hmm. um, food and sleep is a very relevant topic as of now. According to the National um, Sleep Foundation guidelines, okay. we're all supposed to be getting anywhere from seven to nine hours of sleep per night. And mm -hmm. studies have shown anything less than six is actually detrimental to our health. And mm -hmm. I don't know about you ladies, but I don't always get seven mm -hmm. to nine mm -hmm. hours. I mean, <laughs> especially in the last century with our increasingly busy lifestyles, less people are getting more the amount of sleep that they need and so right. it's a very current and hot topic at the moment. I agree, so true. And so so you said sleep deprivation compromises health, which I agree. Mm -hmm. In what ways does this happen? Um, well, it can definitely affect our health, both mm -hmm. in short term and long term. Yeah. And we've all experienced the short term where maybe mm -hmm. we feel a little groggy, we're oh, moving yeah. slower, a bit agitated. True. But the long-term effects can actually be as dramatic to, as contributing to obesity and mm -hmm. diabetes yeah. and cardiovascular disease. But for today, I think we all wanted to touch on how nutrition and um, sleep are related and how they can affect one another. Mm -hmm. So for instance... A lot of people aren't um, realizing that, that there's oh, that connection. There. Exactly. So um, it's great you to chose it. And it's important. Mm -hmm because actually sleep deprivation can not only changes the amount of calories we eat but mm -hmm. also the type mm -hmm. of foods that we reach mm -hmm. for throughout the day. For instance, the studies um, shown that individuals who are sleeping less can actually consume as much as 385 calories more per day. Wow, that's a someone. significant amount. It is, and you know, like per day, you're like, okay, maybe it's not mm. that much, but after a two-week period, mm -hmm. that's equivalent to a pound and a half, <laughs> which yeah. will add up, <laughs> definitely. And you know, that caloric increase could definitely be due to um, individuals who are sleeping less are gonna reach um, more for the high-fat, high-sugar foods and eat less protein. Okay. Hey, that's key right there. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep building on that. So why does lack of sleep promote these poor eating habits? Yeah, uh, indeed, lack mm -hmm. of sleep promotes it, uh, a poor eating habits. And it's important to, uh, to tell everybody that not only lack of sleep promotes eating habits, there right. are multiple factors I, that uh, exactly. uh, influence our health outcome. Um, mm -hmm. It's, but it's one of the factors. Exactly. <laughs> However, inconsistent uh, sleep uh, pa uh, pattern uh, may lead to hormonal imbalance. And okay. I am particularly referring, referring now to two hormones that may not be as common to the popular knowledge, and these True. are ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin and leptin. Okay, yes. yes. And I'm glad you're sharing that with our viewers. Ghrelin and leptin um, are big players in... Uh, uh, appetite and we uh, body weight uh, regulation processes um, and um, uh, they are constantly influence influencing our body weight so yeah. uh, uh, quantity of sleep as well as quality of sleep right. is critical when it comes to hormonal balance okay mm -hmm. so I'm gonna throw in a question so what does ghrelin Another question. I know I'm already throwing lots of questions. What does ghrelin, if, if you have too much of it, how, what does it so, tell yeah. you? So, so ghrelin is uh, a hormone. It's also called hunger hormone. Yeah, that's and, it. Good. Uh, its function, main function is to increase appetite. Okay. It also uh, distributes the energy in the body. It's par participating in distributing the energy throughout the body. Right. Um, so how does it function? Ghrelin is actually released by the lining of our empty stomach. When yeah. our stomach is empty, ghrelin is secreted and appetite is increased. There you go. So okay. a message is sent uh, to the brain telling our brain, I am hungry, I right. need to eat right now. <laughs> uh -huh. There so, you go. So we eat and mm -hmm. then uh, when we eat, our stomach starts to stretch, right? right. And upon stretching, ghrelin uh, secretion is decreased. So okay. that's when we get where we are not as uh, as hungry. So we stop eating. Mm -hmm. And that's under normal circumstances. That's under normal mm -hmm. circumstances, yes. And I will come back to it. Okay. I want to explain the mm -hmm. leptin to see how it relates to the ghrelin. Okay. Because they work together to keep a balance in our body. Please do. So leptin is produced by the fat cells of our adipose tissue. Uh -huh. And um, it's something particular to this hormone. It, uh, it is released 
uh, proportionally to the fat mass that we have in our body. Okay. And again, a message is sent to the brain. It informs the brain this time that I have so much energy here. I don't need you to eat. So, okay. So this way, appetite is decreased. Right. Leptin decreases appetite, ghrelin increases appetite. Good, good. So as I said, this is in normal balance, but coming back to your question, mm -hmm. how sleep, inf uh, lack of sleep influences uh, uh, poor eating habits. Well, when we sleep, yes. uh, our body uh, processes, internal processes reconstruct. We rejuvenate yeah. and uh, right. uh, Basically, the body gets ready for the next day, right? right. Uh, well, lack of sleep, mm -hmm. on the other hand, will um, lead uh, we, we leave us without energy. Okay. So we don't get that energy that we need throughout the night. Right. So first thing in the morning, we want to get energy from somewhere. So we go to the kitchen and we eat as much as we can. And we usually reach, as Amanda said, for the bad uh, sugary <laughs> things. And we want glucose. We want sugar to give us energy for the day. So we choose, we make poor choices of food usually. Oh. And uh, mm -hmm. this uh, increases our potential to gain weight. True. Uh, and uh, so because of lack of, sl of sleep, ghrelin is in higher amounts secreted than usual and leptin is secreted in lower amounts. So we create this false state of mm -hmm. being hungry and wanting mm, to eat right uh, almost there. all the time. A false state. Mm -hmm. We create a false state. Exactly. That's something important to remember. So. I actually have one more question. So it sounds like food choices, though, can also affect sleep? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's actually okay. <clears throat> somewhat of a negative cycle. Okay. Um, so when you don't get enough sleep, like Magda said, it leads to that hormonal imbalance where the ghrelin's a lot higher than it should be, the leptin's a lot lower than it should be. So you have these hunger cues, and then, like Amanda mentioned, that leads to those poor food choices of craving something that's high in sugar, high in fat, that gives you that burst of energy that you didn't really get from sleep. Right. Um, and then those food choices in turn will then lead to the poor sleep quality and it mm -hmm. starts that cycle all over again. So it's kind of this negative cycle that you get into wow. where um, it's definitely hard to break. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I, I see that. I do have one more time for another question. So it sounds like sleep can influence food choices and food choices can influence sleep then. Yes, Right. Definitely. Okay, so that's the agreement here. Uh -huh. So then uh, one more question then. Uh -huh. What about melatonin? What is it? So melatonin is a hormone that is going to help um, a person get a better quality of sleep because it's right. produced by our body. Okay. So it's sensitive to light. So during the day, the production of melatonin gets inhibited. Mm -hmm. And right. at night, when it starts to get dark, the production starts to get stimulated a little bit. So that leads us to feeling tired and less mm -hmm. alert. Even when you're sitting in a classroom that's <laughs> dark, right. mm -hmm. True. you get a little tired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And do you mind if I share a few ways to? Yeah, I. You know, we, we do have time. Okay, to just share that. I'll give one tip. Okay, so one tip do. I'd like we to mention that. is. Mm -hmm. um, Having a lot of light at night tends to inhibit the production of melatonin, so it's best ah, one to yes. two hours before you sleep to get rid of the cell phones, get rid of any electronics, mm -hmm. turn off the TV, Perfect. and do something that's a little more relaxing, like reading or something like that. It's like cueing your body to mm -hmm. get ready for bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But exactly. that cutting back on that light is, is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do know also that when you eat foods like tart, cherry or drink tart cherry juice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's rich in melatonin yeah. too. Yeah, and milk, so yogurt, milk, almonds, absolutely. walnuts. So people can have that at night before going, yeah. well, not exactly before going to bed, but in the evening during mm -hmm. dinner. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then that'll help produce the melatonin. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm so excited because the ladies mm -hmm. are going to show us a couple things in the kitchen to help with sleep. Right, ladies? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. we're going to go into the kitchen, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Chat and Chew. So we're here to show you a, a recipe that's something that you can help with your eating habits and, and promote that sleep that we were talking about. And there's a couple habits that are shown to actually um, decrease your sleep quality, such as consuming high um, refined carbohydrates, such as white bread and white pasta, 
things like eating too much or too little, um, a regular eating pattern. So I'm gonna hand you over to Liz to talk about some of the foods that will help the sweet sleep quality. Yeah, so like Kristen mentioned, um, eating refined carbohydrates and high fattening foods that are kind of heavy an hour or two before bed probably isn't the best idea because it's going to keep you up and your body's going to be digesting it for a while. So it's good to eat those things kind of early in the day. And we have this nice chia seed pudding recipe that includes all types of melatonin boosting rich foods. So we've got some chia seeds, we have coconut flakes, we have bananas, walnuts, we've got a little salt for some flavor. Honey is a great melatonin boosting food too and it adds a little sweetness to it. So if you have a sweet tooth, it might help um, before bedtime, maybe an hour or two before to cut that sweet craving. So I'm gonna send it on over to Magda and Amanda and they're gonna go over the recipe with you. Mm -hmm. So like Liz was saying, today we are going to be making a chia seed pudding. It is intended to make the night before you intend on eating it with family and friends. The great thing about this recipe is it's not only delicious, but light, which is important to eat it maybe after a workout, which I don't think Liz was able to get to, but one of the other tips in promoting a good night's sleep is getting some exercise through the day. So let's look at our recipe. Um, it calls for using a cup of milk. Um, um, yeah, so we and we have dairy milk today, but Liz, mm -hmm. do you want to just give us some ideas if maybe you're lactose intolerant or allergic to milk and can't have that? Sure. So if you are lactose intolerant, if you choose not to eat milk because you don't like it, there's plenty of other alternatives. You can use coconut milk, you can use soy milk, which will also be replacing that protein that milk has. It won't be replacing all of the nutrients, but it's a better choice. You can also use almond milk. There's so many different types of nut milks out there nowadays. There's hemp milk that's also a higher source of protein as well. So what's next, Amanda? Well, Magda just went ahead and poured three or a third cup of, or excuse me, um, three quarters cup <laughs> of milk into the bowl for us to mix. Um, next yes. we have our chia, chia seeds. seeds. It's going to be a quarter cup of chia seeds. Yeah, well, oops. We'll use the same It's okay cup. if you spill it into the bowl. Yeah, mm -hmm. no problem. And what's cool <laughs> about the better. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll just talk a little bit more. <laughs> what's pretty interesting about chia seeds <clears throat> is that if you let them soak for 20 minutes or preferably overnight, they soak up all of the milk or whatever fluid they're in. Yes. So they almost come become like a little yogurt substitution themselves. They end up kind of swelling actually and absorbing mm -hmm. the liquid. So this is one that we actually soaked overnight. Um, so you can see it kind of expands and gets that pudding texture that we are looking for. And another great thing about chia seeds is that they are rich in omega-3s and that is known to um, decrease inflammation in our body which is another great way to increase better sleep because if we're less stressed we're obviously going to be able to relax and sleep better. So next our recipe calls for two tablespoons of honey. Okay, let's add the honey. <laughs> And, and then another addition um, that you can add to maybe thicken up your chia seed pudding if you'd like is with the milk you can maybe add some um, yogurt of your choice and just like Liz was saying it doesn't have to be a Greek yogurt or dairy yogurt, it could be a coconut, an almond or a soy yogurt. So because we are missing a tablespoon right now <laughs> uh, to measure our honey, I just pour a little bit in and uh, of course you can make it um, uh, based on your uh, uh, taste. Uh, if you like more sweet, you can add a little bit more. Uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, we get some glucose, some, some uh, lactose actually, uh, sugar from the milk as well. So we don't want to increase that intake of glucose that much. Um, now we will add... Uh, yes, one teaspoon of vanilla some extract. Vanilla that comes in this cute little jar that Magda <laughs> brought from, where'd you buy it from? Romania. Romania. <laughs> It kind of looks like a perfume bottle. Yes, <laughs> it does. And it's not perfume. <laughs> it could be used but it's, well. it's <laughs> <laughs> it would probably smell good, though. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it smells good. Smell. It does? It does. Ooh. You want to smell <laughs> too? Yes, I do. <laughs> Oh, it does smell Don't leave me out. I can smell that vanilla extract. Mm, maybe we should try that. It's perfect. <laughs> so okay. last but not least, to make the chia seed pudding, Magda's just going to add a pinch of salt for um, sure. some more flavor. We'll just add a pinch of salt. 
it boosted boost that flavor very well. And then... Um, so this is it for the actual chia seed pudding. Yes. Um, I don't know if you can see, it's very liquidy as of now, but like Kristen was saying, just it soaking in an um, airtight container in the refrigerator overnight will cause the chia seeds to swell and it will take on a pudding-like texture. So we actually did this last night and um, uh, they, uh, they, it, it, it looks nice and thick. Uh, we added also some yogurt to this. You can add uh, Greek yogurt or whatever Coconut flavor yogurt. you want mm -hmm. yeah, to make it more flavorful. Um, so it will look kind of like this when you eat in the morning. Uh, you can also uh, tap this with uh, fruit, whatever fruits you would like or uh, you choose. Um, we uh, chose bananas because they are rich in melatonin and uh, uh, coconut uh, as well as some walnuts. Uh, they are, uh, all are uh, nutrient rich uh, foods that will uh, help us with, uh, with sleep. Uh, and not only with sleep, because when we combine these uh, healthy foods, uh, it brings us a lot more than uh, a good sleep, yes. a lot more mm -hmm. uh, health benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the great thing about this is, like Magda has here, you can you know, actually just leave it in this jar and take it with you. So if you mm -hmm. want to do that for breakfast, if you're not so much of a morning person and you want to get more sleep um, and kind of take that extra five minutes to wake up a little bit later and just grab this out of the fridge when you want to go in the morning. Or like Amanda and Liz had mentioned earlier, if you want to do it as a post-workout snack or um, a late night snack, it can be something that's really easy just to grab out of your fridge that's ready to go at all times. So you don't really have to think about, oh, okay, what should I make at this point? It's already ready to go. Exactly. I know I get kind of lazy sometimes in the morning or after workout. It's like, I don't really want to make something right now. So it's nice to have something that's ready to go. And I think another important note to talk about our chia seed pudding <laughs> is I know that my niece, she's still about 17 months, but I've made this at home and she loves it. And it's important because, you know, the puddings that you can buy straight out of the grocery store, there's chocolate, vanilla, and they're full of sugar. It's processed. So this is a super fast, as you could see, easy recipe that the kids will love as well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you can control all the ingredients you are adding mm -hmm. to it, right? And mm -hmm. as you mentioned, I guess earlier, they are, uh, chia seeds are very high in omega-3s. Yes. And uh, uh, it's very important to increase the amount of omega-3 in our uh, uh, diet because American diet is very high in omega-6. So omega-6 and omega-3 are essential fatty acids which our body doesn't make. So we need to get them from food, the food we eat. Um, omega-6 is uh, recognized as, in, as uh, influencing or um, inflammation in our body. And omega-3 is uh, recognized for decreasing inflammation. And our diet, American diet, is very rich in omega-6. So we need to increase the intake of omega-3s and chia seeds are a very good uh, way and it's a plant-based uh, uh, mm -hmm. right, uh, uh, source mm -hmm. that we can include because when we get, get it from uh, animal foods or animal products, we can get that saturated fat that we don't really need, uh, we don't need as much. So we get other things that are not as um, necessary for our body. Mm -hmm. And also uh, chia seeds are very high in uh, fiber, uh, which, um, so we know that fiber is carbohydrate. And uh, uh, it's good to know that the fiber doesn't uh, increase the sugar because it's not digested through our body. It's not, it, it's not increasing the sugar in our blood. Uh, so insulin is not released in the same way as it would be released when uh, we eat uh, glucose or sugar. Um, fiber also helps our gut, beneficial gut bacteria. So it's very important to feed that good uh, bacteria because it will help us in return, right? Mm -hmm. I also so. wanted to mention too, with omega-3s, like everyone's mentioning, they're also good for brain health too. So they kind of 
hit both things. They work with your brain mm -hmm. and your nervous cell membranes system. and your nervous system, mm -hmm. but they also help decrease inflammation. And you need a balance of omega-3s and omega-6s. Mm -hmm. So omega-6s aren't bad, we just get more of them in our diet. And also what Amanda said earlier with her, um, with her niece, it's kind of fun to make this with your kids because it's like a little science project. They yeah. can watch yeah, the chia sure. seeds, sure. soak up the wa uh -huh. soak up the fluids the night before, and then the next day they'll be all excited because it looks different. And then you can also let them put in whatever they want so that they feel like they're a part of the process and they're learning healthier habits along with it. Yeah, pregnant women need uh, omega-3 uh, for the well development of their babies. Uh, because they uh, may get uh, brain problems or nervous system problems. So omega-3s are very important for growth and development. And we need to keep this in mind as we combine our foods. We need to look for foods that are rich in these uh, sources that we really need to take from the diet because our body really doesn't make it. Mm -hmm. So we can continue to our with our recipe. And we so we would leave this f overnight uh, in the refrigerator and it already starts started to get yeah, uh, a little, a little bit, bit yes yeah. thicker and we will uh, now <laughs> use this for um, to assemble our yeah. cheese yeah. yes and, add and as you can as you can see it is nice and thick and for this one as i said i used yogurt as well so it looks very good and Can yummy. It smells good. Yes. I would yeah. like for you to smell it. My hands it. are clean, so I'm just going <laughs> to scoop it up with my fingers. Yes. This will add a little crunch, too. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. It's so looking great. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. looking Come nice. on in. You know, I'm just going to add Walnuts. one thing about chia seeds, yeah. though. I, as much as we love chia seeds and it's a great food item. If anybody is going into surgery though, they might want to back off on the high um, omega-3 type of foods because okay. it can make them good bleed point. more. Yes. So it's it's good to have, but too much of one thing can, can be an issue, especially yes. if they're on blood thinners. Yes. So make, make, might make them bleed more or they're going to surgery. So they would just have to cut back on sure, it. Right. That's, That's a like, good point. Yeah. <laughs> just because it's uh, good, yeah. you know, we have to be careful. Well, with too certain. much of everything is too always much. Yeah. It can go lead into toxicity, yes. so we always have to keep a balance. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so true. So true. Mm -hmm. Can I interest you in some chia seeds? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this what is why that? I came over. Because <laughs> um, I can't just come here and not take a bite. Right. Mm. You cannot mm. say it's bad. Mm. <laughs> oh, I love it with the coconut in there. Oh, good. And a little added crunch on mm -hmm. top of the walnuts, exactly. too. Mm. You don't know mm. how it is. <laughs> <laughs> you need to taste it. Kids will love this for sure. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, I love it. And for color. We, oh, we could ooh. also Oh, add. look how pretty Aww. that is. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wonderful how fruits, even vegetables, because of the rich color that it has, it makes food look even more beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Isn't that great? And oh, we I can add eating this. whatever <laughs> fruits mm. uh, we want. So yeah. Blueberries, it's great. raspberries, they are full of antioxidants, which oh. are... Um, working against our inflammation processes in the body so right um yes so true yeah. yeah does everybody get enough sleep on most days here uh, or well we uh, try <laughs> that's the key exactly you, you try i love sleep. yeah yes. i think i'll be making this to kind of help with that um there you go that's really yummy so. mm -hmm. <laughs> wonderful <laughs> yeah. great ladies thank you so much for the information but, that you yeah, shared with us yeah. regarding food and sleep we don't realize how important sleep is is to us until somebody brings it to our attention exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and so it's just as, as important to eat well to move well mm -hmm. exercise yes. but in order to have a good weight too we also have to get enough sleep until next time take care everyone bye, bye. <laughs>